We're back again, another episode. This week, joined by Danny Fife, friend of the show. Welcome to the show, Danny. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, this weekend, starting tomorrow, actually, we've got U.S. Open golf. It's something we haven't covered a ton of on the show, but I play golf. I'm a fan of golf, um, despite my Montreal Canadiens, hockey-loving Canadian self here. Um, I'm a big fan of, of golf, watching and playing. Uh, mm-hmm. You yourself are a, a bit of a fan as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I play. Uh, I'm pretty terrible, but I like to, I like to watch it. It's one of, it's one of my favorite sports to watch. As boring as it can be for most people, I, lo- I love to watch it, and play it as well. So this weekend with the with the Open coming up, um, I was looking at some of the uh, some of the pairings for uh, day one, and there mm-hmm. were a couple that kind of jumped out at me. I was wondering if you know you you had any thoughts on it. Morikawa, Thomas, and Kepka looks like a yeah. pretty interesting, uh, interesting pretty, pairing. Yeah, pretty stout group. Um, they're all finishing really high right now. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see what Tony Finnau does. Guy's always in and around <laughs> everything, yeah. but yeah. I don't know if he's got the finish for it. Um, is there someone that you're looking at in the tournament? Um, or a couple of guys. I know that we had talked just off air about Phil coming in and doing Phil things at 50. Is there someone yeah. that you're looking at in this tournament, you know, that isn't Kepka to kind of step up and, and take this thing? Or, you know, maybe some guys that are off the off the path that you think might have a big weekend? Yeah, I mean, um, Tony Finau is always, like you said, up there, and he's definitely due for a finish. Um, he always seems to play well but he just can't seem to punch that punch the ticket at the end um but um i like i like um phil i mean phil and and thomas and speed and those younger guys i mean they are all well i guess phil's not younger but you know the younger guys they all they all are going to make it because you know they'll play well but um experience goes a long way um, in a lot of these tournaments, a lot of these majors, especially the Open, um, because it's a totally different animal. You know, it's not it's not easy. Like um, DeShambo was talking about this week, everybody was or last week, everybody was making fun of him because he said it's not supposed to be easy. You know, yeah. nothing about golf is easy. The easiest e- easiest golf course on any day is still, you know, difficult. But um, right. but yeah, uh, I mean, I, I would like to see honestly, Finau would probably be. I would like to see him get a finish, um, probably more than the rest of them. Um, Kepka, you know, he's a long baller, so he's, you know, he can, he can have a very good chance of finishing high as well. Um, but um, Finau and and uh, more, I mean, more Kawa, he's he's done well. But well, you I think feel about like the a, um, DJ McElroy Rose uh, grouping. Well. Um, you know, you got a gold medalist in that group to begin with. Um, and uh, DJ is just always good. You know, number one, he's been number one on and off for s- several months now. Um, and I, I just, I think those groups like that, where you get the two or three studs together. Um, well, Zalatoris and Spieth are with Scheffler. Yeah. Um, and that's another big one. There's kind of the old guy group with West, uh, Westwood, Sink, and Casey. Oh yeah, that'll be that'll be a good good see a lot because you you got to think. I look at it this way: if you play with a bunch of guys that are you know like really playing really well at the time, it's just like every other sport. You know, you challenge yourself to be better. You know, so um, if you're playing with guys that haven't had a top ten finish, top thirty finish in you know two or three months. Obviously, it's it's not going to be the same because you're you know people they do thrive off that a little bit you know I know it's a one person game you know you're yeah but, do you think do you think that has an impact like if you're playing with let's say you're playing with a long baller and mm-hmm. you're more of a like a layup kind of guy um, yeah do you think that it makes the layup kind of guy push a little more maybe on his on his drives and you know maybe he's reaching a little more or vice versa where the long ball guy is seeing you know beautiful approach shots that are you know putting putting the layup guy in better position do you think that that like plays mentally on a guy and it changes the way that maybe they approach the holes i mean it would have to i know you know when i go out and play with my buddies i i don't want to play with guys that are 
Um, I mean, I don't care to, don't get me wrong, but like when I'm playing, if I'm in a, in a tournament or something, I don't, I don't want to play with guys that are worse than me because then I feel like I'm doing okay. And the guys yeah. who are just as good or better than me are playing with a group and they're beating me by four strokes. And here I'm content with what I have, but I'm losing, you know? Um, so I, I think I honestly, yeah, I mean, the groupings and if they're friends, you know, like if Kepka, Kepka and Shambo got put together, you know, everybody knows that big, you know, uh, catastrophe that's happened over the last two or three weeks. You know, that would be that'd be prime time TV right there. Everybody would tune in. Yeah, I absolutely. think they would. Play, I think they would play a little differently. You know, just because they don't like each other. You know, I think they would be trying to outdrive each other and trying to, you know, I mean, playing their A plus plus golf. You know, with a little extra effort, just to prove that you know who's the alpha male in that group. You know, pretty much. Definitely. DeChambeau's got uh, Matsuyama and Fassi in his group. Uh, and uh, the other one that I see that I kind of am, am interested in is uh, with another guy that doesn't always finish a ton. Uh, it's Bubba Watson, Adam Scott, and Sergio. Yeah, I mean that's but those those are that's experience right there. All the yeah. experience of those three guys, and you know, and Bubba's obviously he's very unconventional. He he never he never took lessons. He never he just picked up a golf club and started swinging it. So he never had anything. He's just on tour because he's good. Like, there's no, he didn't go to school for that. He didn't have, you know, a pro. He didn't go have Hank Haney teach him how to hit golf balls. And, you know, that's just, that's rare. You know, you don't know of a lot of guys on tour that keep up, no. keep up the pace that he has with no, no teaching. So, absolutely. But that experience goes a long way. Uh, it'll be an interesting tournament for sure. I, uh, I, I like Fino. Fino's my, like he's, I just, I have a soft spot for him. I don't know why yeah. he's just always well, in. Uh, and uh, I would probably put kind of, you know, maybe Bubba as my, my secondary. If I'm, if I'm picking up, yeah. if I'm, if I'm creating a line, I probably have those two guys on there and maybe toss yeah. in some other guys. So, Hey, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind. See, I like that's the drop him too. I mean, he's not, he just does like, you watch some of his interviews and I was watching, you know, some videos on Facebook last week of him and, in his conferences, he just has he just has a no care attitude. You know what I mean? He's like, well, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. But he's not in the media for anything negative anymore since his last little stint he went through there for yeah the drug abuse. But um, you know, he's he's really straightened it up, and yeah, you know, I think he became a, a way better role model than he was before that. So definitely, um, away from golf, um, we're both baseball fans. Uh, oh, yeah. You're a fan of ball. I'm definitely a fan of baseball. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's been something that's plaguing baseball right now, at least in the public's eye. This has been going on for forever. This isn't new. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I need to make that clear before anyone goes, well, what about this new issue? It's not new. Cheating and baseball are synonymous with each other. Mm -hmm. It's you, Everyone is always trying to get ahead, whether it was you know, even pine tar to an extent for a hitter mm -hmm. getting a better yeah. grip on the bat is an mm -hmm. advantage yeah so when you saw that people like trevor bauer were calling out guys and he said well if everybody's gonna do it i might as well too um and then the major league baseball comes back and goes we got it we're gonna cut down on it you got 10 days to clean yeah. it up what yeah. were you thinking about how do you feel about the situation because honestly i like I'm pretty over it. I, I get it. Yeah. Baseball wants home runs, but I mean, I. So my big issue is is that they don't want. I feel like they want to control. Obviously, you know, you can't. Every pitcher, even even way from way back in the day, they always use some advantage. That's where I mean the spitball. That's where the spitball came from. You know, more grip. You know, saliva. And um, I feel like there's a rosin bag on the mound. Pitchers right. have a, a rosin bag on the mound. I mean, even though it's it's made to keep your hands dry so the ball, you can have better control, it still gives you better grip. I mean, it's a powder that's going to sink into the seams. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, guys stopped wearing sunscreen. I read a story earlier about guys stopped wearing sunscreen because they said it was a, you know, if he put it on too thick, he could rub it off and it got tacky. Like, I mean, it's getting insane is, what, is what's happening. Um, but these athletes anymore are so good. I mean, they start from such a young age. You know, parents of, you know, the baby boomers and, and kids that are, you know, and our our children, 
you know what I mean, that are our age, a little younger than us now, we're, we're brought up saying, you know, you got to play this sport your whole life and be the best you can and get every advantage you can. So, um, I mean, a lot of them are just trying to get that advantage without getting caught because there's there's probably Hall of Famers that you would never call a cheater. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I would never, you know, call so-and-so a cheater because he's in the Hall of Fame and he's a great player. But I guarantee you he did something that was probably a little bit shady. You know what I mean? There's going to be... Andy Pettit did steroids. Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's, guys, a three, he's, a, he's a huge... He's an incredible player. But... I, mean, I, feel, I feel like it's... I feel like it's kind of that coming back around. Like, with the steroid use, like, there was a point in time where they put the hammer down on that. You know what I mean? And steroids, yeah. they're like, stop it. You know what I mean? There's going to be certain regulations for steroids. And now, we've come full circle to another thing that they're going to think is going to change baseball um, to where they're going to say, you know, listen... We're gonna throw you the ball, and like we'll have the umpire wipe it off every throw. Or I mean, I don't know. I, yeah, I, everybody's going to speed it up. It's yeah. kind of silly, to be honest with you, because this is what happened. So steroids weren't illegal in baseball until they were. Yeah. And no, early on, no one said, "All right, guys, uh, you can't do steroids. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no steroids, nothing." People were in locker rooms with you know uppers and greenies and all sorts of different. <laughs> drugs to benefit them on the mound that were not even necessarily legal pharmaceuticals yeah. and they were taking them baseball didn't care baseball yeah. didn't care at all because you know why because mark mcguire and sammy sosa were hitting dingers oh, and people were them. watching them people yeah. wanted they the, they had a lockout they needed fans right yeah. now uh i think there's this like <laughs> big attention being paid to it and it makes no sense to me at all because yeah. They're put, they put the rule in that says it, but they, if people have been breaking it and they haven't been enforcing it, why are we now all of a sudden we're like, oh, we didn't we didn't know baseball. We didn't know. And I just think it's bullshit, to be honest with you. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody that has anything to do with baseball has been in baseball. You know what I mean? They don't they don't go down, you know, to the local right. high school and hire a football coach to be over anything in the MLB. You know, all these guys are baseball guys, so they know all the baseball tricks. You know, the people making the rules have probably played and done something, you know, and I understand. I think they're trying to give a certain, um, I guess, category of people what they want by saying, you know, uh, these balls can't be curving and breaking off this hard. These, you know, we can't be doing this and that. But I mean, just because you don't get to see three home runs a game doesn't mean, you know, like and a couple of weeks ago, we had what, four Four or five no hitters within, you know, several three or four months. Yeah. I mean, no nos. And like five of them I think we have so far. And that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I think I have two opinions on it that are really conflicting. On the one hand, I love offense and baseball. I've always been an offense and baseball guy. You said yeah. you pitched in college. I when I played baseball I was an outfielder. So I preferred being on the offensive side of the ball. But I can respect a good pitcher. Like my mm-hmm. favorite pitchers of all time are guys that didn't throw, you know, it's not Roger Clemens or Randy Johnson, although both incredible pitchers. It's uh, guys like Mark Burley who pitched. You had to mm-hmm. locate the ball. Oh yeah. That's yeah. what I prefer. And so I like on the one hand, I want to see pitchers pitching and not just, I'm going to throw at 110 and you're gonna swing as hard as you can and we'll see what happens, which is what's going on right now. That's why Vladdy can sit on a fastball all Mm -hmm. day long. He knows you're gonna pump it in there and if it's anywhere near the location when it makes contact, guess what? It's out Mm -hmm. of the park, it's gone. Over with, yeah. On the other hand, I really don't care if they're using sticky substance, give the batter something. I don't care, whatever, like, if you're not gonna enforce it 100% of the time, then it's not a real rule. This like yeah. unwritten rules of baseball kind of thing is silly, but if it's a written rule and you're not enforcing it, then you're doing a poor job. Yeah. Baseball has an identity problem is what it is. Well, yeah, it seems like <laughs> it. Yeah, because, you know, people people want to have their cake and eat it too. They want it a certain way, but then they don't. You know, they want it, you know, with for certain teams and not for others. You know, this, you know, like the scandal with the Astros, people still beating them to death. You know, like, <laughs> like every team didn't listen. As a Patriots fan, I get it every day when I talk football with people. Where oh, they go, yeah. your team cheated, and I said, your team cheated too. You just didn't get blasted for it because you oh, your yeah. team didn't win a hundred something games. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, like, I mean, it is what it is. I don't think a couple ounces of air is going to make a hundred game difference. No. I mean, I'm just, I'm no. just saying. It's no, still it doesn't. Right? It's still exactly. Yeah. I'm still the greatest quarterback in the world of all time. You know, it's not. It's not. I don't know. But I'm sure Michael Jordan had something. He might have. I don't know. Had some kind of secret laces or put some shit on his fingers. I don't, I don't know. You know, it like, could have been. Yeah. So what happens is, what happens if something comes out about Jordan? Would that tarnish his whole? You know, would that would yeah. that ruin his whole career? No. Nah, Wide receivers going. used to have um, ta- uh, stick them right. They had stick them on oh, their yeah. hands. Mm-hmm. So I just I when it comes to sports, you're talking about taking people from, um, you know, some a lot and a lot of the time, not all the time, but you're talking about taking people who have been practicing hard at something their whole lives mm-hmm. and have an opportunity to make life-changing money at some yeah. point, oh, potentially. Yeah. And I mean, you're looking at minor league guys who are riding the bus, grinding along. And if you're a bullpen guy and you get an opportunity to come up for a few weeks of major league pay, that's life-changing to you. That could be, oh, yeah. that's, you know, that's a couple of years of not having to work as hard or taking an off time, a part time job in the off season, working at Home Depot. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. I like, so I get why guys do it. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people grasp how hard professional sports, no matter what they are, really are. Like they do. I mean, some people are just like, oh, it's baseball. It's America's favorite pastime. Now, from high school to when I went and played in college, and I played at a very small community. Like it wasn't like I went to. You know, Tennessee or one of these right. big, you know, yeah, big yeah. college. It was small, and the competition from my high school just to a no-name college was crazy. I mean, yeah, the hitters, the hitters I faced were in a whole different league. It wasn't like I could just, you know, be like, "Well, this guy sucks at hitting fastballs on the inside corner." If I threw fa- three fastballs in college on the inside corner, one of them was going over probably the school building. You know, I mean, like there's no, you know, they catch on to that stuff. It's a whole different thing, and and th- these guys have so much talent. They, I mean, they don't need to cheat. You know, they really don't need to, but, you know, every little advantage they can squeak out of each other is what makes them just a little bit better. You know, a little, a little more of a, a top-notch athlete. And, um, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to be angry with it, really. You know, you got guys, like you said, you got Vlad and you got Acuna and some of these dudes just hitting Tatis, hitting bombs, Otani, hitting, hitting balls 500 feet. You know, like, yeah. I wouldn't want to throw a pitch against a dude I knew could hit it into tomorrow. You know, why, why would you not try to do something, you know, to help yourself, you know, be in your team, you know, <laughs> combat that. I really want to yeah. see um, Tortuga pitch against Vladdy. Yeah. I, I want to see the guy that doesn't, <laughs> that guy doesn't cheat. That guy just lobs it in. He's like, yeah, that guy doesn't cheat. Yeah, I want to see, uh, is that is that the one for the, the twins, uh, Astadio, William Astadio. Yeah, just, I think it, so. Yeah, he just he lobs them in. He just yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. like slow pitch style, and people yeah, don't I'd really love, know I'd what love to do to with see it. Pat Pete's take a swing at a forty-six mile an hour pitch just to see. Like, yeah, just to see where it goes. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I look, I the guys that bother me that are cheating, and I say cheating with quotes because, again, if everyone's doing it, isn't really any different, but. Um, I don't like when I see guys like Garrett Cole, uh, who are, you don't need to do it, man. You're a good pitcher. Just like, just play the game. Like, what, what are you trying to do this for a Cy Young? Get out of here. It's like, I get it when guys like, um, Chris Colabello was playing with the Jays and he got busted for PEDs. I get Mm -hmm. that. He's a journeyman first baseman who couldn't get out of the minors and needed to make the money. He wanted to get up there and, and make the bigs. And he got caught. And I, it sucks for him because it tarnished him. He's probably never, I don't know if he ever played in the bigs again, but he definitely didn't yeah. play with the Jays. They, they put him down yeah. in the minors and released him. Yeah. I get it. When it's a no name guy, it makes sense to me. If it's some young pitcher coming up, you don't need it. You got to work, just work on your mechanics. I also have opinions about, you know, young kids throwing curveballs and slurves at, you know, 12 yeah, or 13. I but yeah, I, I, I never had a curveball. I never threw one. Most of my career, I hardly ever had a changeup fastball and knuckleball and that was it my circle change and my fastball were all i, I didn't need you just, it's all about location you know every little if you ain't cheating you ain't trying <laughs> yeah kind of, you know? absolutely um this has been fun man i uh i i hope that uh we have a good golf tournament yeah uh, mm-hmm, coming up uh, for sure and uh uh, more importantly, I hope that uh, my Jays continue to do well and your Reds don't. Well, I mean, my Reds, <laughs> I, don't know what's go- I don't know what's going on with the Reds right now. I think I'm in a dream. 
don't oh, know. That's all right. I don't know what's happening. Uh, it's all good. I appreciate you doing it though, Danny. Appreciate it, man. Hey, no problem. Thanks. We'll have you back on for sure. Oh, definitely. Thanks. Yep. See you later.